The best way to organize your files in your Mac OS downloads folder automatically. Let me show you how. Welcome back to the channel. So if you have a Mac and you have a downloads folder, I'm guessing you do, files in there can start accumulating and get really messy over time. I mean, one year out, you look in there and there's a million files in there and you're like, what in the world can I do? So today what I'm gonna show you is how to automatically take files that go into your downloads folder and then move them to other folders that are specific to the file type, all done automatically using macOS shortcuts and the automation feature. So let me just show you this. It's actually a really cool feature all built into the Mac. Also, I'm just gonna show you the basics here to try to get you started. It should only take about five minutes or so, and you can keep adding to this as you need to, but here's my disclaimer. Always test this out on like a fake folder first to make sure you know what you're doing, and also it's better to start with an empty downloads folder and then to actually start it when you have a bunch of files in there and stuff like that. Just keep in mind that this is a programmer writing, but once it's gonna be done, it's gonna be really cool. I'm gonna show you here in a second, and you're gonna to wanna to use this, but you can definitely start with a sample folder just to try it out. Okay, the very first thing you wanna do is open up Mac OS Shortcuts. So on my screen over here, I'm gonna go into my applications. We're gonna scroll down to find the Shortcuts app. It's kind of near, you know, it's alphabetically ordered. Shortcuts is right here, I'm gonna double click on it. You're gonna probably get a screen like this. But for this example, we're gonna deal with automations that's built into Shortcuts. Keep in mind here though that you need this, you know, you need to be in a fairly recent version of Mac OS. If you don't see it in here, that means you're on an old version, you may not have access to this. So I'm on obviously Mac OS 26, you know, Tahoe. So over here, here's the automation link. See it over here? So when this opens up, you're gonna see automation here in the left-hand bar, and you wanna click on that. Now yours is probably gonna be blank in here. I actually have two of them set up already. Yours could be blank. Don't worry about that. S select automation, go over here basically, and click the little plus symbol right there. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up this screen. Well, what automations allow us to do is, just for example, you can automate things. So you can automate a folder so that when files are moved into the folder, they automatically do something based off of a shortcut. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to create this. So if you go back over here, you can kind of fool around in here. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff, but we're gonna go down to folder. See it right here? And it's even got an example in here saying when files are added to the documents folder, it's gonna do something, even though that's just an example. But we're gonna highlight folder, click next here, right there. And then in here, we have to select a folder, all right? Now this is where you could choose your downloads folder, but for my example, I'm not gonna do that because this is only an example. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and choose folder, and again, you could select your downloads, but again, my disclaimer is test this out first and then you know move, you know try to get all your files out of there and then start this and you can do some tests before you you know have a million files that go all different directions. That's that's my kind of, my, you know, my disclaimer. But anyways, you can select downloads if you wanted to. What I'm gonna do is on my desktop though, I actually created this test downloads folder right here just just for this example, because that may, I'm just gonna pretend this is my downloads folder and it's on my desktop. So I'm gonna select that folder, but you can select any folder you want to have this automation tied to. That's the one I want, so it's gonna be right up in here. So then here it says, when any item is added, modified, or removed, I wanna have added here, so when any item is added to this folder, all right, I don't, it's gonna say run after confirmation. I don't wanna confirm it, I want it to run immediately, see that? So run immediately, and I don't even want it to notify me, I just want it to run immediately, so I'm gonna leave that blank. I'm gonna click next here. This thing's gonna pop up right here. It's gonna, you know, don't worry about it, you're gonna go down a new shortcut. This is the important thing right here, click on that. What it's gonna do is it's gonna open up, let me actually shut this down behind it so you can see this better. It's gonna open up your programming window, and basically this is automatically generated from the, the automation we created, so any folder change summary, so that's the folder that we created. Don't worry about that so much, that's not important. What's important is gonna be the programming stuff we're gonna show you next. And uh, and now, now that we actually have that folder designated in there from automations, we're gonna write a program that moves those files, all right? And that's kind of what I wanna show you here. So let's just get started. Okay, so just leave that alone. You wanna go over to the right area, the right-hand side over here in this box up here, and type in repeat, all right? And we're gonna look for repeat with each. See it right there? And double-click on the repeat with each. And you're gonna see that it creates repeat with each in items and then end repeat. That's what you're gonna see initially. But that's not what we want. The first thing we wanna do here is where it says items, you're gonna select this, and go down to shortcut input, all right? So shortcut input right there. Now it's gonna say repeat with each item in shortcut input and then end repeat. So it's ending this process. This is, the, this is the crazy part. So now we're gonna click on this again, second time. And this time though, we're gonna choose added files, all right? Right there. 
So it's kind of complicated. <laughs> you have to click on that. You have to do a couple of things here. Repeat with each item in added files, all right? That's what we want it to be and then end repeat. This is the very first step of the program. This will all make sense, but this is the, you know, once you get this, the initial part set up, then you can go do if and then statements to move all your files next, which I'm gonna show you. But this is kind of the meat of the program right here. So do this first. Okay, so next over here, we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna look for if, all right? So you're gonna type an if up here, you're gonna see this little if here. You're gonna take this if statement and drag it right in between here, right there. So you're gonna click it right in there. It's gonna, you know, obviously this is what was in there before, these two things, and we, we drag that right in here. So this if statement did all this in here. It says if this, this, and then it says otherwise this. Well, don't worry about that. We're gonna get, first First thing I want you to do is just click on, there's a couple of different ways to do this. This is my, the way my mind works. I'm gonna make it a little bit more simplistic. So where it says otherwise here, there's a little X here. Delete that first, right? So now it says if repeat item has any value, and then end if, all right? That's where we wanna be. So, so what I wanna do here is where it says repeat item here, I'm gonna click on this actually and type in right there, it says file extension. I'm gonna change it to file extension. So it says if file extension is, and then anything. We don't want it to be anything there, right? We want this first one to be, let's just do, let's say a PDF. So we're gonna type in PDF there. So if the file extension is and it has PDF in the file extension, it's gonna do something, all right? That's what we've created so far. And then this is the end of the if statement. But there's nothing in the middle. So if the file extension's PDF, it doesn't know what to do. So we gotta do something. So now we wanna add a move in here. Let me show you what we do next. So I'm gonna go back over here, click on this. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna type in move just like that, and then we're gonna type in move file right there, see it? Now this time I'm gonna take it, not, I'm not gonna double click it, I'm gonna just take it here and then drag it right in there, so right in between the if statement. So now it says if the file extension is PDF, it's gonna move, right? Now this says repeat item, you can leave that alone right there, see it there, and then two shortcuts. Well, two, where do we want it to move to? So here's my test download folder over here. Imagine this was your downloads folder, right? I'm gonna double click on this first. So inside of here, I created a couple subfolders, you know, image folder and a PDF folder. That's inside my downloads or my test downloads. So that's what we're gonna dwell on. So, you know, where it says move, um, move to, I'm gonna click on the shortcuts button here. Click on that, right, actually, and it's gonna open this up. I'm gonna go into my test downloads. Again, you could you could select your downloads folder. I'm gonna do this as a test. I always do a test first. I'm gonna select that folder. But now, if, if the, so if the file gets dragged into this folder, I want it to move to this images folder, because that's gonna, or actually, I'm sorry, a PDF, because that's a PDF. So I did a PDF extension. So I'm gonna double click on the PDF folder, which I created, it's empty now, and I'm gonna click open. So now it says, move the repeat item to PDF folder. See that? That's the folder that's inside of here in the PDFs. Now, the thing that you could do here is instead of, you know, in, in my example, I created the folders inside of the actual folder, but these folders could be created anywhere. They could be, you know, on an external SSD drive somewhere. They could be in a completely different directory. I'm just doing this for example reasons. To, I'm putting them in the same directory. So if you imagine you had your downloads folder, you could have all those subfolders in your downloads folder, and then once a file gets dragged in, it would just move to those other folders. Or, like I said, it can move to external SSDs. It can move anywhere. You just have to choose the right destination here. So now that we have this done, let's take a look at it. Okay, so this should be enough for the very first thing here, for the first example. So obviously we're gonna name this, actually let's just name this really quickly. So to name one of these things, actually just move this around, you click up here, move files from download, right? If I can spell it correctly. And then you click off this, now it's saved in here. So now that this is actually saved, we're gonna just minimize this. We're gonna minimize this behind it. Now I just have an example. Here's the folder that I created that automation on and here's a PDF file. So we're gonna open up this folder. So according to what I created there, if anything I drag into here, let's say you download something from the internet or if I just take this PDF file and I drag it in over here, what's gonna happen? Well, it should take it and it should move it into the PDFs folder, see it there? So let's see what happens here. I'm gonna take this file, drop it in here. Now it's gonna take a couple seconds here. Let's see what happens. There, it disappeared, see that? Now it's gone. Now we're gonna double click on the PDF folder and there it is right there. So it actually moved it from this folder into here. Again, this folder here that it moved it into could be anywhere on an external SSD. You just designate it where you want it to be. But take a look at that. So it cleaned up my downloads folder and it's moving them into their correct you know, designation, wherever you want it to go. So that's the first example I wanted to show you there, all right? So I'm just gonna take this and put it back over here. Let's just do this one more time just so it's a little bit straightforward for you. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into, so let me just open up shortcuts again. So here's my program again. Now keep in mind, if I shut my program down like this, all right? 
inside of here, um, again, actually, let's just go back to the very beginning. When I open up shortcuts maybe a day from now or something, I just go back into the automation and I look, for, here's my test downloads. See this right here? This is the one, the way I named it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that and then it's gonna open up the program again. See that? So you can go ahead and, you know, if it, if it gets shut down, you can open up the program that same way. But here's what we just created. But now we're gonna do something a little bit. We're gonna add to this, which is kind of the next step here. So let's keep moving. Okay, so really quickly, if you notice, this is the meat and potatoes right here, this if and then end if, see that? And then basically this other part out here is kind of the outer structure, but this is the inner structure. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna do another if statement. So we're gonna go back over here, we're gonna do if, all right? And we're gonna take this if, and this time we're gonna drag it under this end if right there. So down here, we're gonna let it go right in there. And now it's gonna say, you know, this and then end if. Again, last time, like I said, just for simplicity, we're gonna get rid of this otherwise. See that right there? Click on the otherwise. So again, now we have an if, and then it says if the result, right? But up here it says if file extension. So what I'm gonna do here is let me actually see. I'm gonna click on it, and then I'm gonna click on file extension right there. See that right there? Click on that, all right? And then we're gonna click well, actually off of it. So now it matches if file extension is there. The next thing is if it's anything, I'm gonna click on this, and this time I'm gonna type in JPG, so any JPEG, right? And we did PDFs before, now we're doing JPEGs. You can do this for any file type and all of them. So I'm gonna click off of that. Now we have this, it, it's very similar to this, but we're missing the move, right? So if you look up here, we're missing a move. So if it's a JPEG, it'll just end. We need to add the move right in here. So I'm gonna go back over here, go back, type in MOVE, we're gonna go down and move file again, and we're gonna drag that right in there, just like that, all right? And uh, so now we have the if, the end if, and the moves in the middle. But this moves a little bit different. It says move, and then it says if result. This says move, repeat item, see that? So it says move if result. I believe you have to right click on this. Let me, yeah, you right click on this, and you go down to repeat item right there. See that, you have to right click on it. That's the little secret there. Click on that. It's gonna be repeat item, so now it matches that one. And then this time, we're gonna repeat it. We're gonna basically move it to where? Well, I'm gonna click on this, and then I'm gonna select, let's go back here. Actually, let me go back to my desktop. Let me see if I can find it here. Here's that folder. So I created this other P, or this other um, images folder. So I'm gonna end up moving like JPEGs and um, PNGs and all those different extensions into here. So I'm gonna click on that folder, and I'm gonna click open. All right, so if you take a look at this, you know, again, this is your outer structure. Your first if statement starts here. You're gonna say if the extension's PDF, move here, and then end it. And then I'm gonna create another if statement. And then if the file extension's JPEG, you're gonna move it to this images folder. And I could do another one below this end if, the same thing, you know, I would do the same thing, but if it's a PNG, I'd move it to the exact same folder, or I can move it to a different folder. But now that this is done, we should be able to add now a JPEG folder, or a JPEG file, and it should move it to the right folder now. So Let's just go ahead and again, I'm gonna minimize this, all right? And then we have our folder over here. So let's, let me grab actually, let me go back over here. I'm just gonna grab any JPEG file. Here's one here, I'm gonna throw it over here. So keep in mind again that here, here's a JPEG file, here's this. So I'm gonna open this up. And uh, now keep in mind, if this file came in from the internet even, or if it was already in there, it's gonna start moving them. So that's why you don't wanna do it with like a downloads folder that's got a million things into it until you test it. Maybe set up one of these things on something that's got a really weird file extension, make sure it works, and then create the other one, all right? And always back up your data, always back up your data. So here we go, I'm gonna just drag this in here. It could be downloaded in. So we're gonna give it a couple seconds, one, two, three, and it should move it instantly. There, it's gone. So where is it? It's not gonna be in the PDF, right? It should be in the images folder, double click it, and there it is, see that? So now it's there. So as things get strapped in here or as things gets downloaded, it's gonna move into these folders or it can move to an external SSD drive to save space. Maybe you have your downloads, you know, as soon as it goes into the downloads folder, it moves to that external SSD so that you save all that space. If you have only 256 gigabytes of space, that's a good way to do it. But then again, make sure you back up the external drive instantly with something else because you don't want just one copy of your data. That's a no-no. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up, but if you take a look, like I said, just think of this as a program and just think that you know the first part you have to set up correctly and then all these if and then statements, you just keep adding to it. There's other ways to do this. If it's file extension is this one, you can add other extensions in here. But for me, my brain works best if I separate each individual one like I did. There's probably a faster way to do this. I know that. I'm just giving you the initial steps to do this. Now, this is the, you know, the sky's the limit with this thing. So again, if you go back in here and you go back over to automations over here and you go back and click the plus over 
over here. There's all these things you can do, like when a message comes in, if I click next here, so it'll say like a message, if a message comes in from this sender, you can say what sender, and if it contains these words, you can have it run immediately. And then you can create a shortcut that says like, you know, it'll, it'll ring you on your phone or it'll do different things. So it's all triggered by this automation. And there's a million things in the automation that you can create. We happen to do the files, um, but you can also do or the folders, I mean, but you can do one like where you plug in an HDMI port and it does something. And it's just really crazy what you can do here. But just remember, there's the automation first, but then you have to create the shortcut that gets triggered by the automation. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. And uh, so anyways, we'll leave it at this. It's getting too long. Um, post in the comments if you have any questions, but I'm just giving you the base here. But always back up your data. Always test on a folder that's got nothing in it until you know what you're doing. And then you can go from there. We will talk to you in the next one. Peace.